Today's message I want to talk about is called Modern Day Sorcery. Now, you might think of sorcery as like wizards or Gandalf with the staff, electrocutes go everywhere, or, you know, just like supernatural powers that are demonic or not of God, uh, like the Egyptians and the mages and things like that. But there's actually more to the word sorcery as used in the Bible. And I want to touch on something that goes in hand in hand with sorcery and those magical powers that are not of God. But first off, if we look at scripture, sorcery is considered an abomination to God. In Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 10 through 11, it says, There shall be not found among you anyone who makes his son or daughter pass through the fire, or one who practices witchcraft, or a soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who conjures spells, a medium, a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord. So sorcery is an abomination to the Lord, along with sacrificing children and speaking to the dead, other things like that. But sorcery in Galatians in the New Testament is considered a work of the flesh. In Galatians 5, 19 through 20, it says, Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you as I did before that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. So sorcery is very serious. And we see that in Revelation chapter 21, verse eight. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the abominable murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake, which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So what does God mean when he says sorcery? Because that's pretty serious. An abomination, uh, work of the flesh, the lake of fire. Well, the Greek word for sorcery is pharmakia. And pharmakia is where we get our word for pharmacy, pharmaceutical. And no, that doesn't mean pharmacy and pharmaceuticals are demonic. The word has taken on and garnered a new meaning over time from the original usage in Hebrew. The Hebrew is actually kashef was the Hebrew word for sorcery. But pharmakia back then involved more than what, is, what it does today. And we know that medicine's not demonic because Paul referred to Luke as the beloved physician. And Jesus even said, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, implying that sick people need a physician. So most scholars believe that uh, Luke was also a Greek doctor, a Greek physician, and the Greeks used natural remedies and treatments for illnesses and, and pain relief and such like that. Some were uh, spiritual or superstitious, which likely Luke did not believe in, but most was actually applicable and he was revered as a physician. Sorcery in the biblical context actually refers to magical arts, but also the usage of drugs for spiritual and ceremonial purposes. And the two go hand in hand. Many pagan religions around the world have been using drugs for spiritual purposes, to contact deities, gods, worship the, the demons that they worshiped, that they believed were gods, but we know are demons. The demons of Hinduism, the Indians, they used a lot of substances, one called bang, which is a liquid form of cannabis, marijuana, high dosages to contact the demons that they worshiped. And, and the Vedic scriptures of India actually were, were inspired by these communications. And this was happening in the land of Canaan as well, as in Deuteronomy when God said this. Well, the Canaanites were actually using cannabis to worship the god Asherah. Now, Asherah, they had 400 prophets and 450 prophets of Baal that Elijah confronted in 1 Kings 18. And that's where the, the, the fire, God had the fire come down on the altar and put them to shame. Asherah was a known demon that they worshipped. And how many times did the Israelites fall to Baal worship? You know, how many times do they fall to false idols? and told not to engage in the things of the people you're about to inhabit, to, to be set apart. We're called to be set apart as Christians, as God's people, and not engage in things that God clearly says are not okay. And I want to talk about probably three of the top drugs that are used today, still in modern times, in a similar way that people are trying to reach the spiritual things. People are trying to know the purpose of life. And as Elijah was saying, taking acid, smoking weed, many people are doing this and it's actually considered sorcery. 
So marijuana or weed, 55 million Americans used cannabis at least once in the past year. That's a very large amount of people, and it's growing. Look at the recreational legalization. Look at the acceptance for marijuana. Well, I want to say that cannabis in itself, the plant, is actually not demonic. It's actually very medicinal in many ways. The, the seeds, the hemp seeds, are very nutritional. They have a, a perfect ratio, 3 to 1, of omega-3, omega-6 fatty acids. I, I was a big health guy, health coach back in the day. I loved this stuff. And the fiber, the hemp fiber, very strong, one of the strongest on the earth. George Washington said, grow hemp. It's a, it's a cash crop. And... Uh, the oil, the, the CBD oil, is actually used to treat uh, epilepsy patients. There's a 44% produ reduction in seizures. It's, it's very powerful, but that doesn't get you high. Eating the seeds doesn't get you high. Uh, uh, the CBD oil doesn't get you high. But, but getting high, the CBD and the THC, which are in weed, produces the mind-altering effects, produces that sense of being stoned or high. And there are many people who do this, like me, and begin to become spiritual or do it for spiritual purposes. Now, back in the day, the Indians, still today in Hinduism, actually consider cannabis one of the five sacred plants of Hinduism. They used cannabis in three forms of different potency to worship their deities and to actually make contact with these demons, one being Shiva, which is an actual demon we see get cast out at the altar that, that inhabits people and many times inhabits people addicted to weed. And that's why you see that, that people who start to get into weed start to kind of get into new age stuff many times. Start to kind of, you know, get into yoga or get into spiritual things and kind of leave maybe an atheistic mindset and enter a more spiritual one, but apart from Christ. And that's very, very common. And for many people who get into the new age, smoking weed is sometimes the, the moment they realize they have a spiritual awakening. And they have this new identity that comes upon them. And that, that they're a light worker. That they're called for more of a higher purpose. And they begin to get into many new age things from that moment. It's very, very common. It's very, very popular. And many people are using it today. And like I said, the Canaanites, they used weed. And actually archaeologists in 1960s, they found in Canaanite temples, cannabis in the Canaanite temples. So God was referring to this. God knew about this when he was talking about this in Deuteronomy. And around the world, a lot of other usages of weed still today. But when people use it and they don't understand the spiritual implications or maybe even Christians who are using it, it allows open doors. Because we know that sin is an open door to the devil. Sin is an open door to the enemy. And if sorcery is described like this in the word of God, and sorcery and, and, and smoking marijuana and, and taking LSD and acid and mushrooms for different purposes is considered under that, you're giving way to the devil. You're giving way to the enemy in your life. And it's very problematic. And even in Exodus chapter 34, verse 13, it says, break down their altars, smash their sacred stones, and cut down their asherim. The ashram is plural for the Asherah poles that they would put up to worship Asherah. Marijuana, cannabis, and this demon, Asherah, are very correlated in Canaanite times. And Elijah, the prophet of God, came against them. Some people actually try to say that Moses got, you know, hot boxed in the Holy of Holies when a, when a seraphim put a coal down and, and the smoke uh, came and Many people believe this actually that the, the Greek word, I mean the Hebrew word kane bosom is actually cannabis. So they were using this in the Holy of Holies, burning incense with it, getting high, having mystical experiences, but it's not true. The actual meaning for kane bosom is just an aromatic that has a scent, a reed, like a, a type of plant. And there's many of those, and there were many other different kinds throughout Israelite history, not cannabis. Not cannabis, but it's a good excuse if you're addicted and you want to find a good uh, scriptural. How many times have you done that, you know? So the, the, the next one I want to talk about is, is mushrooms. Now, a lot of people, 32 million Americans, have actually said they use mushrooms once in their life. You might think that this is like, no way, people are actually taking this. Or, you know, I've never really heard about this growing up in church. No, this is very common. This is very common, and it marks people's spirituality as well. It's a spiritual pursuit. I, I smoked weed for four-plus years of my life. Started in high school, instantly loved it, started to get more spiritual, 
started to get into Buddhism, mindfulness, meditation. Naturally, I was getting into these things, and I felt like I had literally psychic abilities while high, that I was getting new powers, and I was told that, oh, don't do it. It's a drug, but I'm like, whoa, it's medicinal. It's, you know, so fun, so much laughter. You know, we got Bob Marley saying, you're more like yourself, and uh, I'm, I'm, so I'm like thinking it's all great, and, and so many other people I knew as well, boom, started getting into new age. Before you know it, years later, I'm a certified yoga instructor, and I stopped smoking weed for because I knew it was bringing forth bad things, and it's very deceiving. It's very deceptive the way it stays in someone's life, and things aren't going anywhere, but they feel like there's an excuse to keep using it, to keep using it, to keep using it, but many times it leads people away from their true calling from their true calling in Christ. And that was me, but I stopped smoking it before I came to Christ. So it's not like, oh, now that I'm a Christian, uh, you know, drugs are demonic. No, I started to sense it before due to the fruit in people's lives and due to the results in people's lives. Mushrooms as well. I took mushrooms, a lot of friends who took mushrooms for spiritual purposes. And the Mayans, they actually call mushrooms the flesh of the gods. They took it, warriors would take it before battle. They had a demon called Quetzalcoatl they would worship. This is a feathery serpent that they have all their temples made out of. You know, who deceived Eve in the garden? A serpent. So the, the, the usage of these drugs is very correlated and linked to practices outside of God's domain. Worshipping idols and demons that are not of God and actually engaging in the powers of darkness. And I believe that the church needs to be aware of this, to be stronger in Christ, to be, to be guarded, to be set apart from the world and actually closer to the Lord. Because when you're allowing open doors, demons come in, spirits come in and start nagging at you, start leading you away from Christ. De many people find that they come into deeper doctrines and you know deeper secrets that are being revealed to them on these substances, especially mushrooms, marijuana, DMT, what I'm about to talk about. And they start to leave the word of God. They start to find that spiritual fulfillment in these spiritual experiences that come from drugs. But it's very demonic and is not a door that God wants one to open. So mushrooms, the Egyptians actually believed that they were placed here by their god Osiris. Now this isn't uncommon for these pagan religions to believe that these substances that cause these you know, experiences came from gods, divine beings. And in the book of Enoch, which isn't a biblical scripture, it's not a part of the canon, um, but it's mentioned in Jude, so at least a part of it is true. The book of Enoch in chapter 7 of the first book actually talks about fallen angels teaching sorcery, plants, and root cultivation to man. And sorcery in the Hebrew is specifically described with plants and roots right next to it. So here we've got the Egyptians believing that their God, their divine being, came and and created these things or showed them. And then the book of Enoch that Jude referenced in the Bible also describes it. So it's, a, it's, it's a, another correlation. Now, the third one is ayahuasca or DMT. I'm not sure if you've heard of this, but Megan Fox was just on Jimmy Kimmel talking about her experience going down to Costa Rica with Machine Gun Kelly. I think her uh, boyfriend taking ayahuasca. And you, you see, she's talking about the chakras. She's talking about you know, awakening your true self and trying to get Jimmy to, to you know, awaken his uh, chakras. And it's all ideology that's actually not found in the word of God. And that's the ideology that comes to people when they're on these experiences. Now, ayahuasca is becoming one of the most popular spiritual healing retreat plant medicines in the West and in the world. People fly from around the world to the Amazon, to Costa Rica, to receive healing ceremonies from shamans who are trained in ayahuasca. Now, ayahuasca means the vine of the dead. And this chemical, its main ingredient is DMT. DMT is the chemical that Joe Rogan, the biggest podcaster pretty much in the world, popularized about a decade or more ago as something that's uh, uh, spiritually explorative and you can find the new dimensions and you know there's entities you come in contact with and there's elves that you speak to and and you start to receive messages from more divine sources and you know if you're wanting to seek the truth if you're wanting to know more about reality and what's out there in the universe and all these great things you're going to be intrigued you're going to be like wow I want to try that but do I have the courage to try that 
Because many people have bad experiences. They didn't fully let go, which is usually the excuse when somebody has a bad trip or a terrifying, like, demonic possession and fear grips their soul. The, the, the main excuse is, oh, they didn't let go. You got to let go. You got to surrender to the experience. Surrender to the experience. Basically, surrender to the demons as they deceive you and inhabit you. But people get deceived into this because there's so much, uh, there's so much, publicity around it hollywood talking about it the media talking about it you go online you see documentaries where it's like wow this person's healing from years of trauma from years of abuse they were sexually abused and they went and took ayahuasca and that this mother gaia this mother earth spirit came to them and told them how much it loves them and how much you know that they're meant and how worthy they are and it defines them and it and it brings them that their identity and that that healing and that restoration and you're like man i want that and there are so many people, millions right now, who are, who are wanting that, who are craving that. But it's Jesus Christ who actually gives that. It's their Savior. It's the Savior of their soul, the one who actually came and died for them. This Mother Earth or Gaia spirits, the ones they talk to, they didn't come in the form of man, take on all of our suffering, all of our pain, and actually live it through a perfect life and die for us. None of them did, but Jesus did. And if this is you and you're watching online and you've done this before, the one you're seeking is Jesus Christ. He is the savior of your soul. He is the healer, the redeemer, the king of kings, the Lord of lords. He's the one you're actually looking for. And the open door is through the Holy Spirit. You pray to the Father in heaven through the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ, and you will know your savior. You will know the truth and who you truly are. These substances, smoking weed, taking mushrooms, having ceremonies around it. I had ceremonies around DMT. I smoked DMT, which is a, a form of ayahuasca that's more potent, not as long. And within five seconds, you're literally in a new dimension. And you read the book of Ezekiel, the book of John. They were sober. They were just walking with the Lord. You know, they were, they were praying in the spirit. They were walking in the spirit, having these experiences. So you don't need to take these drugs to have these experiences. You're, you're meant to as a believer in Christ. Angels were breaking the apostles out of jail. Angels were guiding them as they were fulfilling their mission in Christ. They were witnessing them. They were seeing these things. You know, Peter on the rooftop with the vision, of the, you know, that came down, the blanket that came down, and then he preached to the Gentiles. Like, these visions are normal for Christians. These visions are normal for believers in Christ who are close to the Lord and fulfilling his calling. It's not only these drugs. It's not only smoking weed and taking psychedelics where you can see these visions and have these trances. But following Christ and, and saving souls and bringing people to the knowledge of truth brings the exact same experience supernaturally. So there's not more supernatural outside of the church. The, the, the true supernatural is in the body of Christ, in the one who created all things. In him, all things were made. That's what it says in Colossians. And in him, we are complete. We are complete in Christ. There's no external source we need to go to to receive that completeness, to receive that satisfaction. Many people see the church as just dry, going to church, sitting in the pews, listening to some preacher read from a dogmatic scriptures that were edited. You know, many people believe it's just dry, there's nothing there, there's nothing spiritual. And now, you know, we at Hungry Gen know that the Spirit does move, that the Holy Spirit is at work, that people are set free, that demons are sent to the pit in Jesus' name, and people are healed, people are recovered, and people experience the true salvation of their soul. But other people who grow up in, in different churches who might not have that fire, who might not have that awareness of how God moves today, they see this online and they say, man, this looks way cooler. This looks way cooler. Why am I sitting at church like, okay, my parents are forcing me to, but the second I get out of the home, I'm going to go try these things. And, you know, Elijah's getting into to weed, getting into LSD, psychedelics, angel cards, astrology. This is what's happening to the youth today. But we as believers in Christ need to put the power of God on display. We need to demonstrate the power as we preach the word so people can actually see that God is stronger. The same God that delivered the Jews out of Egypt, the same God that took down the Egyptian mages and wizards, he's alive today and he's using us. He lives in us. It's us who are dead, but Christ lives in us. And he will use you to bring the truth and to bring his healing to so many souls in your life in your workplace, in your family. He wants to use you. And if it's not you, people are going to go to drugs. 
people are going to go to sorcery without having any clue. You know, we got to wake up to the need that people are having to actually experience the true love of Jesus Christ, the true power of the Holy Spirit. Because I can tell you, when I took these drugs, when I took acid, which is LSD, at a, at a music festival on 420, which is, you know, the holiday for marijuana. And I'm like, I just want to take a little. And my friend actually get, accidentally gives me a DECA dose, which is 10X. And before I know it, I'm like, okay, I'm in this, you know. I, some people never literally return mentally and their identity is fractured forever. I'm like, you know, I, I'm in this. And I was having visions overlooking the earth of a hierarchy of souls and emblems over a ranking of souls. This is a cult doctrine. And that there's reincarnation and that you ascend over lifetimes to higher levels. It was all correlating to the new age doctrine that I was beginning to dabble in. But it was bam, huge vision. Like boom, this is the, the divine source energy telling me these things. The universe telling me these things. Very vivid, more vivid than anything in my life. And these experiences mark people. They mark people's identity. And for those who've done it, if you've done it, and you've had experiences like this, and you're a believer, you need to completely get what you learned through that experience out of your mind. Because this did not come from God. God never sanctioned this. Yes, God can save people who are under demonic attack while they're doing it, but it's never meant to be taken to know God. And those who do receive those visions, when you come to Christ, you need to go through those times that you had these experiences and this doctrine was downloaded to you and compare it to the word of God. You need to study the scriptures. You need to study the true word because it's living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing soul and spirit. And there are demons that are trying to attach to your soul. And if you have the word of God, it will break that connection that those demons have. That deception that they're staying in your mind with will get exposed in the light of Christ. And the Bible, which is the lamp unto our feet, it's the truth. God is light and his word is the truth. But these experiences are, are very, very common. And, and I really want to encourage you that don't get involved in this. And if you have been involved in this, to, to repent of it, to renounce it, to really go through, what did I start to think new about God? What were these secrets I started to discover about God when I was high on mushrooms and I realized the true power of God is this or the true power of God is that? Can't tell you how many people I've met, believers who, who watch my video on psychedelics, they reach out and they say, I, I don't know how to piece it together. This happened to me on psychedelics, this happened, this experience. And it needs to get repented of. It needs to get renounced and, and not just forgotten because it lies dormant within someone's mind. The seeds that Satan plants in those experiences about who someone truly is, they lie dormant unless they're plucked out, unless they're taken out, uprooted, and the weeds are uprooted. And I want to encourage you, if you've done this before, to begin to remember these times and to repent of it. And if you know someone who's in this, praying for them is essential. Praying for them is essential because there are spiritual demons, spiritual beings that are attached to them, that are trying to guide them away. The Holy Spirit wants to guide them. You know, the Greek word for spirit is breath or a wind. When we're in the Spirit, when we're in the Holy Spirit, we're in that draft of God's calling in our life. But there are unclean spirits that people are residing in, that people are being guided by, and their destinies are being thwarted. Their destinies are being taken off of the path of Christ. And this is a, a, a massive element of it that is an open door for demons and for Satan to have access in people's lives. And for those who might still think that, hey, weed's fine if I smoke a little, or these things are fine if I smoke a little. And, you know, there are people who have extreme pain issues and Extreme conditions that, quite frankly, modern medicine doesn't know how to heal, and they're, they're actually genuinely seeking an, something to help. I want to urge you to, to, to look for something besides getting high, because there are too many spiritual implications. There are too many implications that, that, are, that, are, that are negative that you don't want to get engaged in, and there are other remedies if you search for them, but the spiritual implications are more consequential than the mere physical, you know? As we know, fear not who can kill the body, but he who can cast the soul into hell. 
It's, it's eternity that matters. It's our soul that matters. And there will be temporary suffering. All who are godly will suffer persecution. You know, we're meant to endure a certain level when it comes, but we're meant to stay focused on the kingdom, stay focused on the eternity mindset and the precious nature of our souls, staying pure and holy in Christ. The Bible says time and time again, be sober-minded. Be sober-minded. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 6 and 8, 2 Timothy. I could go through. So many times the Bible says, be sober, be alert. And these things don't do that. These things do not do that. A lot of these ideologies, actually, if you think, oh, where did the New Age come from? Why is this, you know, such a big threat on the church now? Well, look at the 1960s movement with the hippies and, and the drugs that they were taking, mushrooms, LSD, psychedelics. I studied the people who brought it in to the West. As I, I revered them, a guy named Terrence McKenna from uh, uh, Cal Berkeley, a botanist who would go to the Amazon and see these mushrooms and take them with his brother and, and write about it. The food of the gods, he called it. And many people started getting into this. And then many people started getting into yoga and Hinduism. And the 1960s birthed a lot of the modern New Age movement we see today. Combined with that was the usage of drugs. So it's not just the spiritual powers that are apart from the power of God, but it's the usage of drugs to gain the knowledge for these spiritual powers that is forbidden by God and urged for us not to do. I really want people who have done this before or people who know someone who done this before, I want this to be a, just a short time of prayer that I want to pray for you if, you've, if you've engaged in this, if you've taken these drugs, if you're taking them right now, you're smoking weed, people don't really know, you're thinking it's fine, I urge you, you can, you can end it right now. If you're watching this video, you can literally pause it and say, no, I'm done, flush it down to the toilet, put it down the drain, put it in the trash, no more will you have darkness in your life. You will live pure for Christ. Your calling will be fulfilled in the Lord. That's possible because the Spirit of the Lord, the anointing, His anointing breaks every yoke and there will be no yoke of the enemy in your life. We are not meant to have any attachment to Satan, any connection to the devil, but purely to Christ who lives in us. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed this content and this was a blessing to you, would you help us and hit thumbs up so that it could help more people to discover this video. It costs you nothing, but it can go a long way to help with the algorithm. As well as if you're not subscribed to our channel, hit subscribe, click on the bell so that you can be reminded each time that we upload videos. Thank you so much for being a part of this community. If you're interested in learning more about Hungry Gen, our internship, our conferences, deliverance, and so many other things, go to hungrygen.com for more information. And as always, remember, better is not good enough, the best is yet to come.